Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing a series that I just started yesterday talking about the fear of the Lord. And I know that many people who watch my program may be a little shocked because the connotation that goes along with the fear of the Lord is talking about people being terrified of the Lord, basically driving people to God out of fear. And uh, I teach from Romans chapter uh, 2, verse 4, I believe it is, that it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. And so I'm always talking about the grace and the goodness of God, and some people might be surprised that I'm teaching on the fear of the Lord, but there is a positive way that the fear of the Lord is used in Scripture. Matter of fact, there's about a thousand references uh, to fear in the Bible, and over 300 of them are talking about a positive fear of the Lord. On our program yesterday, I used uh, Isaiah chapter 11, where it talked about that Jesus feared the Lord and was quick in the understanding and the fear of the Lord. And Jesus didn't dread his father or wasn't terrified of punishment. Uh, that's not what he's talking about. He was talking about he loved his father. He respected him. He honored his father. And then we use scriptures like uh, Acts chapter 9 verse 31 where it talked about that the New Testament church was walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit and were built up and edified. And I used a number of scriptures that talked about the fear of the Lord in a positive way. I define fear as basically the dictionary says when it's used in this positive way about the fear of the Lord is talking about awe or reverence for the Lord. And this is the way that I'm talking about the positive fear of the Lord. Let me go back again to Ephesians chapter 5 and in verse 33. This is talking about husbands and wives and it says, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. And this Greek word uh, spelled P-H-O-B-E-O uh, I don't know how you pronounce that, but it's where we get phobias from. It's talking about fear is what the word is meaning. It was used in 87 verses in the New Testament. 86 of them were all translated some form of fear. Fear, fearing, feareth, or something like that. The only time it was translated reverence is right here in Ephesians 5.33, and it's talking about the wife fearing her husband, but not fearing in a negative sense, being afraid of being beaten or something like that, but reverencing and respecting her husband. And this is the way that we are supposed to fear the Lord. In the same way that a wife is supposed to fear the husband or reverence or respect the husband, we are supposed to fear the Lord. And there are some really positive things said about that. Look at this in Psalms chapter 115, verse 11. It says, ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. It's using the word trust and fear interchangeably. And I've been using the word trust to help define what the positive fear of the Lord is all about. So again, Psalms 115 verse 11, ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. And again, this isn't talking about a terror or a dread, but it's talking about a reverence, an awe, a respect, or in this instance, trust. Look in uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 9. You know, portion of these scriptures are familiar to a lot of people, but we tend not to take it in its context. Look at this in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And many times people will take those two verses and just isolate them and take them out of their context. But look at the very next verse. Be not wise in thine own eyes, Fear the Lord and depart from evil. 
That's part of the exact same context, and it's talking about the fear of the Lord. I believe that you could go all the way back to the fifth verse where it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. He's just talking about that that is the fear of the Lord. If you were to fear the Lord with all of your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, in all of your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Verse uh, 7, Be not wise in thine own eyes. See, that compares to what he just said about lean not unto thine own understanding. Don't be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from evil. Fearing the Lord is trusting in the Lord, exalting his opinion above your opinion. See, there's many people that, again, because they have a, a negative connotation to the fear of the Lord, they just kind of dismiss all of these scriptures and don't let it speak into their life because they think of fear as being some kind of a condemnation, uh, you know, fear of punishment and things like this, and they say, well, we're redeemed from that. But if you were to interpret this way, that fearing the Lord is trusting in the Lord, it's not leaning under your own understanding, but it's exalting God's opinion above your opinion. There's many people that may not embrace the phrase, the fear of the Lord, but they would embrace these concepts that I'm not smart enough to run my own life. I have to turn my life over to the Lord. I have to trust in Him and not lean unto my own understanding. And that's basically what the fear of the Lord is. Again, the, let's go on in the context here. In verse 8, it says, It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. What's he talking about? He's talking about the fear of the Lord. Is health to your navel, and marrow to your bones. You know, we could go into more detail on this, but I've actually read a number of medical things where they talk about, you know, that the marrow of your bones is where your blood cells are produced. And if a person gets sick in the marrow of their bones, uh, that's where leukemia and a lot of these things come from. This is where they have uh, bone transplants. They actually are marrow transplants. They will actually... Uh, take another person's healthy marrow and put it into a person trying to counter leukemia and different types of cancer. And so anyway, the, res the fear of the Lord, not leaning unto your own understanding, but respecting, honoring, and valuing God's opinion above the opinion of men will produce health to your navel, marrow to your bones. And then in verse 9 it says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. You know, basically, all of these verses that I've been reading, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 9, it talks about trusting the Lord, and then it uses the term fear of the Lord interchangeably, and then it says, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. So I believe that you can say the fear of the Lord is trusting the Lord, valuing His opinion, honoring God and His ways above your own thinking. See, if you take it, and don't take just those two verses out of context, but if you take it in in all of its context, I believe that this is a further definition of what the fear of the Lord is. It's trusting God. It's honoring God. It's not leaning under your own understanding. All of those are very positive things. Look at this in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25. It says, The fear of man brings a snare but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. And so this is a contrast. In contrast to fearing men, that brings a snare. But the positive side of this, you could say fearing God, but the scripture here uses whosoever puts his trust in the Lord shall be safe. So I believe it would be proper to say the fear of, the Lord, fear of man brings a snare, but the fear of the Lord uh, brings safety. And he just uses the terminology here, but whosoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. It's talking about the exact same thing. So again, I'm saying all of these things to introduce the subject, talking about the fear of the Lord, that this is not a negative thing, talking about fear of punishment and wrath being poured out upon us because all of that has been poured upon Jesus and through the grace and the mercy that Jesus brought to us, we do not have a dread of the Lord. I do not fear impending judgment. I know that I'm going to stand before the Lord and my sins will have been paid for and wiped away and I'm going to be able to have boldness to enter into the very uh, throne room of God and obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Hebrews chapter 4, I believe it's verse 16. So I'm not afraid of the Lord in those sense, in that sense. But you know what? I still 
reverence, honor, and respect the Lord. And I think that there's some people who when they find out that their sins are paid for, they don't honor and respect and appreciate and love and trust the Lord for all of the great things that He's done. And instead, they take their freedom and the fact that God is no longer mad at them and use that as an occasion to go live however they want to because after all, you know, God has forgiven them. Well, I believe that God has forgiven us and He's not dealing with us based on our performance. But if you really got the message, if you really understand grace, it says in Titus chapter 2, verse 11, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. And then verse 12 says, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust that we should live soberly and righteously and holy in this present world. You know, if you truly have received the grace of God, the grace of God will teach you to live holy or it'll teach you to have a fear of the Lord. You will be so thankful for what God has done that you will live holier for the Lord accidentally than you ever have on purpose before. So I believe that trusting the Lord is fearing the Lord. Or you could say that if you truly fear the Lord, you will trust the Lord. You won't lean under your own understanding. Let me just bring this down and make a, an application to your personal life. How many times have you just gone out and done things your way and you've leaned under your own understanding and then after you crash and burn and you realize, oh God, I've made a mistake. Oh God, I've messed my life up. God, look what I've done. Then you come back and you humble yourself and you ask for God's forgiveness. You know, this is a tendency that every single one of us have is to lean unto our own understanding. But these verses that I've been sharing with you talks about that you should fear the Lord and not lean unto your own understanding. That you should depart from evil. You should follow His guidelines. You should honor His opinion above your own. If you are a person who just constantly seems to make the wrong decisions... And then after you're in trouble, you come back to the Lord and you say, God, help me, and he gets you out of it. But then you go through it again. One of the reasons for this is because you don't fear the Lord. You don't really reverence and honor his opinion. You think that your opinion is just fine. You know, one of the scriptures that the Lord has used in my life that has really made a big difference is Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 23, and if you were to read this in its context, which again, I'm not going to take the time to do that, but this is powerful when you read it in its context. Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet because he was ordained by God to just announce the destruction and the wrath and the judgment on the Jewish nation because they had forsaken him. And he starts off this chapter talking about how could this happen to the people who were favored by God more than any other people that have ever walked on the earth. They were called the apple of his eye. And yet there was coming all of this judgment. It talked about invading armies coming in and not having mercy on infants or even women that were pregnant. They would kill the women and rip them open and take their babies out of their belly. And it was just talking about the terrible wrath that was coming on them. And it says, how could this have happened to the people who were once the apple of God's eye? And, it, and he basically answers his own question right here in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. And he says, O oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Boy, that's powerful. You know why all of this happened to people who had been so favored and so blessed by God more than any other people? You know why it happened? Because they leaned under their own understanding. They didn't trust in the Lord. There wasn't a fear of God. They decided that they'd do things their own way, and they didn't honor. They didn't reverence. They didn't respect God. They didn't trust in God, and so they did things their own way. And you know what the result of it was? It was absolute failure. In the United States, really, all around this world, this program is being heard in nearly every country of the world. There's over 3.2 billion people who can watch this program on a daily basis. And regardless of where you are, did you know that we see in our secular world today a departure from the fear of the Lord to where people aren't honoring and reverencing and respecting and trusting in God. Instead, they are leaning under their own understanding right here in the United States, which I'm more familiar with it than I am any other place. 
people are getting to where they don't want to hear about what the Bible has to say, about what the Lord would want them to do, and people actually downplay that. You know, I'm going to go into further explanation in the next sex session when I get into this, but there is a spirit of Antichrist today that is operating in the world. And many people don't think so. They just think that it's people and they're, they, they just don't, this is the way they think. No, there is actually a spirit. It says in Ephesians chapter 2, in verse 3, that we were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And that's talking about the children of the devil. Jesus actually said this in John chapter 8, in verse 44. He told some people, you are of your father the devil. And in the New Testament, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3, it reinstates this, that we were by nature. There was a spirit of disobedience that worked in those who don't believe, and we were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. There is a spirit working in this world, and it's called the spirit of Antichrist. There isn't a spirit of anti-Buddha or anti-Mohammed or any of these kind of things. It's anti-Christ. There is a demonic spirit that is opposing everything good and um, people today just do not want to hear about godliness and morality and the things that the nation, the United States, was founded upon. And instead, they're wanting to go under their own understanding. And what's the results of that? Just as Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23 says, that it is not in man that walks to direct his own steps. Man, we need guidance from the Lord. God has created us with a free will, and he gives us the choice. He's not going to force us to follow him. But I guarantee you the right choice is to recognize that you need to trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not under your own understanding. You need to have a fear of God and honor and respect his opinion more than you respect yours. And because the United States is getting away from that, here we are in economic problems. We've got political turmoil violence and all of these things. You know, used to, back when this nation was founded, nearly every kid that went to school had a gun and carried it with them because they needed it for protection from animals or from whatever. And people had guns and they carried them to school and you never had the killings and the things that go on today. Today, we've got metal detectors and armed guards and all of this, and you can't build a fortress big enough to keep all of the violence and the things out of our schools because they have taken God out. The fear of God has departed. And that's why things are going the way they are. Not because we don't have enough metal detectors. Not because we don't have enough of these things. It's because people are leaning under their own understanding. They are doing everything. They are the the plumb line. They are the standard that they judge everything by. And if it bothers them, then, man, they'll kill anybody. They'll hurt other people. They are the center of the universe. That's a lack of the fear of God. I tell you, the things that I'm saying right here need to be said. And it's not just, um, you know, a difference in culture or whatever. There is an actual spirit of Antichrist, and the thing that counters it is a fear of the Lord, an honor, a respect, a reverence, a putting God first in your life. Look at this passage in Exodus chapter 20, verse 6. This is one of the Ten Commandments. And it's, well, it's, it's uh, in the section where the Ten Commandments are being given. And it says in Exodus chapter 20, verse 6, it's talking about God that he shows mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now put that together with Luke chapter 1, verse 50, and it says, and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. So his mercy is on them that fear him. Exodus 20, his mercy is upon thousands that love him. I believe that from this, you put these two scriptures together, you can say that fearing the Lord in the New Testament for those who've accepted the salvation of Jesus is talking about those who love the Lord. If you truly love the Lord, then you fear the Lord. That's what it's talking about. And it's, it's using those things interchangeably. Look at this in um, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 3. You shall fear every man his mother and his father, and keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Again, this fear here isn't talking about that you ought to be terrified, that you ought to be afraid that they're going to kill you or do something, but it's talking about honor and respect. 
In Leviticus chapter 19, verse 32, it says, Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head, which is talking about a white-haired person, a person who's elder, and honor the face of the old man and fear thy God. I am the Lord. So I believe that you could say that fearing God, again, is honoring the Lord because it's being used interchangeably here. And I don't believe that you can truly honor the Lord if you don't honor your parents. Again, going back to one of the Ten Commandments, that you shall honor your father and mother, that your days may be long on the land which I have given you. And also you have to honor people who are older than you. You know, this is really important, and I think that one of the, one of the uh, effects that we see in our society, because there isn't a fear of the Lord, because God is being systematically removed from our social conscience, and we are getting away from the fear of the Lord, one of the effects of that is that people don't honor the aged people. They don't honor their parents. They don't honor those who are older. They don't honor authority. Man, there's a lot of scriptures that go along with this. I'll be talking about this more in detail. But over in Romans chapter 13, it talks about that you are supposed to give honor to whom honor is due and fear to whom fear is due and respect and that we are supposed to actually honor the governments that are over us. Did you know that there is a spirit of disrespect? There is an attitude that people today talk against government. They, uh, man, there are people that hate the police and again, I'm not saying that these people are perfect. I'm not saying that there hasn't been corruption and that people don't do things wrong. But you may disagree with an individual who's corrupt, who is a politician or a government official or a policeman, but you should still respect the power. And there is a total disrespect for authority in the world today. And I believe it comes because there isn't a fear of the Lord. If you are fearing the Lord, according to these verses that I just read, you would fear your parents, you would honor, reverence your parents, you would honor and respect older people. I tell you, that's important. I know that there's a lot of young people watching this program and think, but they don't deserve my respect. I can't respect them. You know, if I was driving down a road, and say, for instance, I'm going from Colorado Springs to Dallas-Fort Worth, and that's about a 720-mile trip. And if somebody was traveling that road in front of me, I wouldn't have to like them. I wouldn't have to agree with them. I wouldn't have to want, you know, to be like them. But if they were ahead of me on this journey, and if they had already gone down the road that I'm heading on, and if I could be in contact with them, you know what, I, it, it would be foolish on my part not to listen to what they have to say just because I don't like their personality or I don't respect them or whatever. If they are ahead of me, they could tell me what the weather's like. They could tell me if there's a speed trap. They could tell me if there's a wreck. They could tell me where to get gasoline. They could tell me where I could eat. There's all kinds of information just because they're ahead of me. And for you not to respect somebody who's already lived through some of the things that you have yet to live through, it's not uh, smart. It's stupid to do stuff like that. A part of fear of the Lord is to honor other people and to recognize God is moving in the lives of other people. You are not the center of the universe. Man, I'm out of time today, but I've got more to share on this. I will continue it. And I encourage you to listen in as we continue to talk about the fear of the Lord. I've got a brand new teaching out on this. I've got a new CD set, a DVD set, and also a live DVD set where I taught this in Dallas-Fort Worth. If you'll listen, our announcer can give you that information and call or write today. I had grown up with God puts us through things to make us stronger people. You get healed if it's God's will. And if you don't get healed, then he wants you to go through it. Listening to things that people said, like, you know, God's trying to teach you something. He doesn't heal everybody. He heals some people. I heard people talking at church about, you know, God had a different plan and God made me sick. The way I was raised, God would get you. I felt like God had, that God had punished me. The church I grew up in was big on just performance. I was such a law-based, legalistic person and didn't even know it. Really devastated with legalism. I was operating in a law mindset. I had a law perspective. Always being focused uh, 
on the law, deep into religion. I grew up in church. I was raised in church. A denomination that was very legalistic. I came from a Baptist background. I am come from a Catholic. I was raised a preacher's kid. I was a missionary kid, grew up on the mission field taught the Bible my whole life, got saved at four years old. And I had been in and out of church since I was five years old. I was saved when I was eight, and I was saved just to stay out of hell. Saved and stuck. Until we heard about Andrew Walmack, and he began to explain. And Andrew just countered all of that with the Bible. No one had ever explained those scriptures so beautifully. It's just made me over on the inside. It's I'm totally different. I'm a different person. And when I finally seen the truth, it was just, it was awesome. And it still to this day is just amazing. His teaching was freeing. It grabbed my heart because I had never heard that our sins were not imputed to us, not put to our account. This makes sense. The Bible makes sense to me. And he's ringing true to what I'm reading in the Bible. She didn't have to perform in order to gain a relationship with God that He loves you. It took the religion out of it and made it all about relationship. And then everything you've studied for your whole life, all of a sudden it comes into sync. It's like, pow. The Spirit came over and just went, whoop. And it all lined up. That clicked and all of a sudden things became so real and so understandable. And you get this revelation on the inside of you. And I wept. I sat on the side of the road and I wept. All of a sudden, the Bible made sense. And now, I live in the blessings of God. My life just changed, and it changed for the better. Life has just gotten better and better. Life is good when you have hope. And God is just good. We have a life now that we've never had before in every area. What I found was victory, where we didn't have any before. I really am grateful that he submitted to the Lord because I'm reaping the results of it. Andrew's complete teaching titled, The Fear of the Lord, was recorded live at a recent Gospel Truth seminar. It's available on either CD or DVD, or if you prefer, you can get the DVD as seen on TV. Each is available for 16 pounds. Remember to specify CD, DVD, or DVD as seen on TV when you contact us. This series is also available for audio download absolutely free on our website. Go to awme.net, click on Resources at the top of the page, and then MP3 Downloads on the left. The first audio teaching in today's series is available for three pounds, but if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will send this first CD titled, What is the Fear of the Lord, Free of Charge? We'd also like to remind you that Andrew's book titled, Living in the Balance of Grace and Faith, has been released in paperback. It's available for £9.99. Contact us today to get your copy. You can use your credit card to order resources by telephone. Our helpline number is 01922 473 300. When calling from outside the UK, you must dial your international calling code, then 44 1922 473 300. Helpline hours are from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. If the lines are busy, you can visit our website where you can order ministry materials 24 hours a day, seven days a week at awme.net. To write us, use the address on your screen. We hope to hear from you today.